Fresh wipes on unofficial servers are one of the most exciting thing about Ark nowadays. For a game that's been out for so long and the players slowly drop off, when an unofficial server wipes, things really start to get lit. If you find yourself a good unofficial server, the servers are normally capped for the first day, sometimes two or three days. But very quickly, these players start to fall off. And after just a few days, these servers are only half capped. Now, obviously, people get bored, people move on, do different things. But the most common reason people quit is because they get raided. This video is going to show you exactly how I do every single wipe because nowadays I can say with confidence that I will always make it to the end of the server with a decent base. So I'm going to show you guys everything I do and everything you can do to make sure that you survive this wipe. Now disclaimer time, okay? This video is not going to give you cheat codes. I'm not going to tell you to press RB squared up, down, up, down, up, down, X, Y, A, RB, left, thumbstick, trigger, shoot. Because there are no cheat codes in Ark, alright? But this isn't going to be an easy thing. Ark is not an easy grind. You're still going to need to put the hours in, but by the end of this video, you're going to be making it to the end of a wipe without getting wiped yourself. And you can experience some of that fun endgame stuff. So that brings us to our first tip. Guys, you got to be getting that level up. All the tips I'm going to give you here are for a fresh wipe. So let's say your server's just wiped here. Yeah? You need to have a way that you're comfortable to getting them levels up. Getting them level ups, you're going to be faster than people. You're going to have more health than people. But more importantly, you want to be hitting that level 100 as quick as possible. Now you need to find what works best for you. I always do the same thing. I'll go on the island, spawn Southwest 3, and I'll do a very specific note run. So I'll grab myself a 2x, then a 4x, then I'll carry on doing this note run. All this time I've got nothing equipped and I'm picking bushes the whole way. This has always given us a little bit of XP. Now this first part of the note run literally takes 5 minutes and it's going to get you to about level 75. Then I'll make my way north to about... Now on the way I'm going to be making myself basic tools and I'm going to be hitting trees and rocks. That's because I'm going to be making cooking pots once I've grabbed our next 4x note. Some people make canoes, I just find it easier to make cooking pots. Once you grab your second 4x note, you're going to have a few cooking pots already queued up so you can start making them. Then you're going to chop a few trees and a lot of rocks and get yourself loads of cooking pots queued up. Now all you're going to do is rinse and repeat that for as long as you need to until you get level 100. You can get all four of the easy 4x notes on the island. Now as I always play solo, the most common servers I play on are 10x servers. Now doing this technique, as long as you're efficient, you can hit level 100 in an hour. You haven't got to do it all at once, but it's a lot easier in the long run, and it's nice to get it out of the way. Now this brings us on nicely to our second tip, because your grind of the day is nearly over, boys and girls. Right now, the biggest grind early on is getting some metal going. You've got to wait for your forges. So what I do is I don't even bother playing on the first day. What you need to do is you need to find yourself a couple of really hidden spots. I've actually found recently that it's sometimes more effective using areas that people don't go to more than hidden spots because... <laughs> Thanks to YouTube, there's not really any such thing as hidden spots nowadays. But anyway, once you find yourself a nice hidden spot, you're going to build yourself a little 2 by one stone base. You're going to chuck three or four forges in it. You're going to put a thousand metal in it. And then you're going to put yourself down a bed. Nice, you've done that. Now go to another hidden spot. Once you get to that hidden spot, build yourself a 2 by one stone building. Put yourself down a few forges and a bed. Now it's day one of wipe. I always do that twice. Sometimes I'll do that three times with three separate bases. That's because one of these bases is going to get found. You've got to accept that. People are going to be going around looking for exactly what you're hiding. But if you've got yourself some good spots, chances are they're not going to find all of them. So you're going to wake up in the morning with a few thousand cooked metal. And you're already going to be ahead of most people. Then you can get some of that metal in upload, just in case and you're already almost ready to start putting down your turrets or build yourself a cliff platform, something like that, depending on what kind of base you're gonna build. Which sets us up nicely for point number three, where you go and build. Now, this may seem really obvious, but I think it's often overlooked because so often I'll see with people who are not kitted out, yet they're trying to claim big spots, right? I mean, if you're watching this video, you're probably a solo, maybe a duo. You do not need to be trying to claim Snow North. It is literally pointless. You're gonna waste all your time. And even if you do get in there, like a six man's gonna turn up and wipe you anyway, so. Don't bother. You're a solo, so you don't actually need a lot of space. Now that's gonna really broaden the things that you can build in. As a solo, I would say by far the best places that you can build is somewhere good up high. Closely followed by decent rat holes. But my first port of call is always somewhere up high. And that's because you don't see no one going out taming Quetzal's first day. So by the time people have got Quetzal's, you're already well defended. And that's about the only thing they're gonna be raiding you with early on. Now just to kind of show you what I mean, I'm gonna show you a couple of different half decent places on different maps. You're obviously not limited to this, there's so many places, but this is just to give you an example of what I mean. Right, so for the first spot I'm gonna show you, I'm on the center, and this is at 39.8, 31.9. Right, so we're in the floating islands, sorry, map, we're in the floating islands, and we're underneath them, right? What we're gonna be looking for is, in the middle under here, we have a big old hole with mushrooms going up there that goes to inside. Now, from one side of this, we have a nice little crack up here. I'm going up into this crack. It's a little ledge in here. It's not very flat, but it's perfectly big enough for a solo, especially early on in the wipe. Now, what you've got to think, if you, if you claim this spot on the first day, the only way people are going to be getting up to you 
with flyers. Now, the only flyers people are going to be having on day one are going to be Tranodons. No one's going to see spin a heavy tire on day one, as long as it's placed correctly. People aren't going to be taming Quetzals, and if they are, they're going to be crap Quetzals, and they're going to have crap tames to soak with. So if you build her on day one and have a couple of heavies, you're going to be unraidable to start with. Now, all this is in proportion. So on day one, if you've got yourself one heavy, you're going to be really strong. But if you've got 10 heavies a week into the wipe, anyone could raid you. But luckily, we followed tip one, so we're level 100, so we can easily get a heavy down. So it's, we've just claimed this spot. People are not going to be raiding this on day one. Another spot I'm going to show you for day one, we're also on the center, we're at 87.1, 33.6. And I've actually built here before, and I survived an entire raid. I'm not going to lie, I've seen a lot of people build here recently though, and they're always raided, okay? So, uh, I don't know if I'd want to stay here too long. But again, we're up super high, we're out the way. So what I'll do is I'll start here. We've already got ourselves enough metal for a cliff platform saved up from the night before. So, a cliff platform down, all we need to do it's put a little hatch frames hanging down, a couple of heavies on it, and we're unraidable day one. Now, if you want to, you can always expand all the way around here. This is what I did. We had cliff platforms coming all the way around here, just a little hole in the base, and then chandeliers hanging down. All right, for another example, we're from Crystal Isles now, and I'm at 43.3, 77.4. Now we're in the floating islands. This isn't the best idea because the floating islands are going to be manic on day one because people are going to want to be. Because people are going to be wanting. Yeah. Because people are going to be wanting to claim their good spots over here. Let me just kind of try and give, give you a better idea where we are. Uh, it's probably the best way to find this spot. There's like some weird like bridge things going around. Um, I don't really know. You'll find it. Anyway, I've actually already built it because I've kind of did a thumbnail here. So I built up here before. This was a great spot. We're up super high. We're far away from anywhere that like uh, people can't like owl bomb us. So what I did is I built up here, I built one cliff platform right in the corner. You can barely see it at all because of the vines anyway. But even if you do see it, I just hang a little. To start with day one, just a little, one of these little hatch frames off, a couple of heavies on it. I also built a little tower down here just to keep people away from it. As I expanded, I built a tower here, built a tower here, built a tower over there. Uh, just as many towers as you can to stop people from getting up there with Quetzal. And all you have to do is just keep on expanding. There's plenty of room up here, even with one cliff platform, it probably sheds to about here. Like, that's plenty of room for day one. And look at all this room. You don't need any more room than this. So yeah, I built here. I even extended down here in the end and I didn't get raided. This is a great spot to be. Now my fourth tip is a quick one, but again, it's very important, all right? And that is don't actually build your base until you can build heavies. So from tip two, where we've just built a couple of little hidden bases just to smelt metal, that is where I'll build my first heavy from. So you survived there overnight, chances are you're not going to get found for the next hour or so. So you quickly farm up the rest of the heavy materials, as well as just a little pill box, maybe a little hatch frame. Then once you've got that and you can actually defend your new spot, then you go and claim your new spot with it. Get that turret up straight away just to stop people from walking up to you and taking all your shit while you're trying to move in. You gotta understand that even if you don't see it, people are always scouting you. There's always people flying past your base, looking at you. If someone sees you in a nice spot and you haven't got any turrets up yet, you're just trying to farm for turrets, you best believe they're coming in and they're gonna take all your stuff. So get that turret built on one of your hidden starter bases, then move and get that turret down into the spot you wanna live in. All right, for our fifth tip. Now I know some of you are gonna go, ah, Kidders is a bitch. And I mean, maybe you're right. You could call me that, I'll accept that. But the truth is you really don't have to fight everyone. Now I'm not saying to play like a bitch all the time, but if you've just spent the last quarter of an hour farming metal and you've got loads of metal on you and someone's flying past you, you don't need to do a U-turn and chase after them. Obviously later in the wipe it's different once you're established and you've got plenty of tames and things. Then yeah, go nuts. But you need to work out the situation you're in in that moment, other rewards are going to outweigh the risks. I kind of have my own rule that I stick by that I won't engage on people unless they engage on me. Unless of course they're looking like a thick boy. So our sixth tip is mainly aimed at solos, maybe duos, right? You see all these YouTubers and big tribes on videos, and when a server wipes, they all have their own role. Some of them will be working on defenses, some of them will be working on tames, some of them will be getting soakers, some of them will be getting flyers. Now you obviously can't do that as a solo. You can only do one thing at a time, really. So you need to get your priorities in line and decide what's more important for you in that moment. Now I'd say the most important place where people fall off as a solo is they focus too much on tames early on. I personally don't worry about tames at all. I'll get myself a Tranodon, hopefully a spare Tranodon while I'm going around, and I'll work on just getting my defences done for the first day, sometimes two days, depending on how big of a server you're on. Because those defences are going to stop you from getting wiped. Having a good trike or a unicorn or whatever isn't going to stop you from getting raided. The only exception I'd make is while I'm flying around, I will check the levels of certain soakers. So if I fly over a Stego, a Carbon Emmys, or a trike, 
I will quickly spike us this level. If it's over 140, I'll probably try and tame it just to see what his health is. That's because someone may have the facilities to fob outside your base and you do want something to be able to counter that. But my point is, don't go out actively looking for soakers for hours. If you're focusing on that and not turrets and bullets, there's no point in having them soakers because you're going to get raided as soon as you go offline. Well, that is the main rules I stick to when trying to survive on a fresh wipe server. In a nutshell, guys, play it smart and focus on your defences more than your attacking. If you see a good opportunity to raid, then raid. If you see a good opportunity to fight, then fight. But just remember, there's going to be some rat waiting to raid you the second you go offline. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed it and you're new around here, consider subscribing. My channel's full of videos like this. And of course, if you have enjoyed it, please be sure to leave the video a like and let me know what you thought about it. And I'll see you in the next one.